You have to say, and we're recording. Oh. And we're recording. Welcome to the Effects Loop. I'm Diaz. And I'm Scott. And we're keeping you in the loop of the guitar community. episode is brought to you by Big Ear Pedals. Go check out BigEarPedals.com. I have a feeling that we'll be talking about getting stuff from BigEarPedals.com here soon. Because, yeah, that's 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 the same for you, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, are we go check out Big Ear... Are we going into what's for new right away? Let's, let's you know what? The, why waste a good transition? What's new with you, Scott? I got a Big Ear Pedals Albi. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Isn't that their newest pedal, Scott? It is. It has eight different effects. Eight? All, all dialed in for you perfectly. You just met, You just mess with the blend control and it's there. And Listen. then there's a more control that's secret. Well, well, actually, you know what? I really didn't know about that. Like, I was going to do this, like, oh, hold, sales pitch hold, thing. Hold the, uh, hold the pedal down. Hold the, okay. hold the switch down and it will go into yeah. a more mode. And okay. you can actually kick it into that mode by like doing the power up trick with it. Really? Yep. What does it give you more of? Uh, it's just like different voicing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You know how? You know what? I'm gonna have to check that out on my new Albi that I got. What? Totally. It's just came in the mail today. Oh my god. I got gosh. a text message. Got a text message from my apartment complex and they were like holding a hostage. They're like, we have a package for you in the office. And I should have held it hostage for you to do something. Well, they sent a smiley face, so I figured it was either a menacing <laughs> smiley face or they were like, happy I got a package. They're like, oh, we'll get him out of his apartment. I don't know. Are they hitting on you? Possibly. You got a package winky face? Yeah, he, I mean he works out. Yeah. So like <laughs> that's the <laughs> so you're intimidated to ask him out <laughs> yeah yeah okay. i mean we're we were we giggled a little you know kind of high fives and our hands stayed together a little too long but i just i booked it oh so so when you get it are you gonna accidentally drop a bunch of papers and see if you guys you know have one of those <laughs> moments when you're cleaning up no i do the bend and snap mm. works, works every, every time, time. <laughs> every time <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, so that, that is loop, episode 172 legally blonde references the entire time you know what <laughs> it's a great I love movie that. It's, it's a fantastic <laughs> movie it's like it's called it's like clueless oh yeah it's like the, it's like that movie that like it seems like it was made to be like for girls but even guys are watching you're like yeah, this is actually just really good comedy and a great story well isn't clueless basically a rewrite of a shakespeare story Don't 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 do this to me right now. Like Ten Things I Hate About You is a is a rewrite of Shakespeare too. I think that's Ten Things what? I Hate About You is Taming of the Shrew, if I'm not mistaken. That's you know what that would have been a great name for the movie. Taming of the Shrew. Yeah. Hmm. I think Ten Things I Hate About You uh, got the millennials into it. Yeah. Oh, that was a good movie too, though. Another another great Julia Stiles in her heyday. Heath Ledger? Heath Ledger. Um, oh, who's the uh the girl from uh oh, what's her name? Diaz is about to read a list. No, I'm not. And then it's got the the kid who was on uh Camp Nowhere. He's in it too. Isn't uh what's his name? The guy who's yeah. in like everything. Joseph Gordon. Joseph Gordon Levitt, yeah. yeah he plays the it. guy that's yeah that's right okay let's talk about other movies from like our middle school high school days allison janney's in this i don't remember her in it yeah yeah she plays is that the one that plays oh no no she's the teacher that's... i think or it's miss perky is what her name is all right i totally this forgot episode's... gabrielle union's in it man there's some yeah, good people in here wait i think you're looking at bring it on no, I am looking at 10 things I hate about you right now. <laughs> um, all right. Anywho, uh, if you like conversations like this that have no 
Oh, dude, no. actually, I totally made a Bring It On reference yesterday by accident. I'm trying to... Oh, we were doing group prayer or whatever, or like oh some like gosh, thing. Oh my gosh, what? Hold on, hold on. Hold and on. someone was like, just be like, man, just get it with the spirit fingers. And I was like, I'm just waiting for somebody to be like, sorry guys, those aren't spirit fingers. These, These are, are spirit, spirit fingers. fingers. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're old. <laughs> All right, so if you like stupid shit like this, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the effects loop. Um, if you give $5 or more, you get in the chat room that uh, we all have silenced, and now we just blast, like, randomly go through and respond to things from three weeks ago. Um, have we officially announced the Volante tier of membership? <laughs> yes, I believe, okay. believe we did. I believe There's we... an entry fee of $400, and then you get given a used Strymon like, Volante. Yeah. So that you can actually be part of the actual. Pretty much what we do is, so we give the $400 to Scott. We have him find the lowest one on Reverb, or he has to get the lowest price of whatever is left we put in our account. Well, considering I got mine for 300 bucks, hopefully we can find a good deal for you. Yeah. I mean, it won't matter to you because we're just trying to make as much money as possible. I, so. I'm going to be pocketing all of that as a uh, service charge, but yes. Yes. How much is the Volante new? 400 new, but you know, <laughs> taxes shipping some clown has one listed for 400 new come on oh wow get out of here get out of here with that yep actually chicago music exchange wants 375 for a new one new one did did the used market dry out on these again no here's one for 330 yeah i need deals to plug can in be had thing. They can be, and it only costs you money. All right, so oh, let's here's move one for three hundred dollars as long as you're willing to pay sixty five dollars in shipping. Three sixty five. Yeah, no. I think there's room to negotiate there. I don't negotiate with terrorists. All right, with that, do we actually want to go into the other what's new stuff? I, I mean, I'm done with mine. <laughs> I just got that. Oh, okay. I think I clean my apartment. That, that's that's definitely new. That sh that 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 shouldn't be new. That should be something you are always doing. Well, I've been through some shit, Scott. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah. No, I mean, I I also I vacuumed yesterday and was like, oh, finally. And I was like, that took five minutes. Oh my gosh. But like yeah. vacuuming is one of those things where I'm like, oh, I got to get it out and I got to plug it <laughs> it's in. A, it's my, like, my, come on. I've got my vacuum sitting in the corner and it stays plugged in. There's an outlet that reaches <laughs> almost my entire apartment. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I was like, you know what? This is perfectly fine the way it is. I don't need to put it in the closet. No one's coming over anyways. I'm going to start just vacuuming whenever I think okay. about it. Okay. First things first. If, if you're listening to this and you don't know the magical outlet in your house where your, yeah. your vacuum works the most... You need to support your partner in the ho household duties and cleaning because you've clearly right. never vacuumed your house or you don't do it enough. Exactly. Everyone has a, their favorite outlet for that. Um, yeah, I, I found mine yesterday. Nice. Um, no, I, I, like I was out of town for, you know, like a week and change and then I came home and then I was super busy with work going back to work. So like my cleaning yeah. fell behind too. And it's, it's just such a relief when you finally get it done. Like your head just feels oh, yeah. clear. So, oh yeah, I try to make like doing a chore part of my lunch break when I work from home. It's just something I get up and do for myself either in the afternoon or during lunch. This has been self help with Scott. Yeah, you should also go for walks, get sunlight, eat well, sleep enough, and don't, toxic relationships have appropriate boundaries. What else should don't, you do? Don't do heroin. That's bad. That's bad. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right you, you know right, you what? make a persuasive argument diaz but i'll agree with you on that one <laughs> you're like listen if diaz is saying it's bad it must really be bad <laughs> like heroin even diaz says it's bad that's a that is a forget the say no to drugs let's just put that out there heroin even diaz won't do it <laughs> actually have we talked about how much of a dump salt lake city is <laughs> is this because you're talking to cole duke <laughs> no i was i was in sight i was in st luke or, or, or you were, St. Luke. Uh, I was in Salt Lake City. You were in St. Luke, okay. And, and which is like, you walk two blocks down the wrong street downtown, it gets shady quick. <laughs> and I'm like, this is Salt Lake. This should be kinda, smiling Mormons everywhere, and it was not. Kind of reminds me of like when you're in Nashville and you accidentally take a left and you're in front of the Scientology church. 
Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that happened to me. The Scientology church close to me is uh, like an old movie theater that got retrofitted. So it's like sneaky. Do they just play uh, Battlefield Earth? I don't know. I've never gone inside. Because that, that honestly might get me to go. <laughs> I, I didn't want to hold a meter that measures my my static energy capacitance and tells me I'm magic spirits are leaving my body. Sorry, we just totally lost our Scientology audience. I'm sorry to see you go. Yeah, Xenu called and <laughs> said, stop fucking listing. All right, let's Maybe move on Tom to gear Cruise. news. No, yeah. actually, so uh, I got a gear story, not so much okay. gear news. Well, okay. I, I did get something new. I got a power supply. One of those, uh, we talked about it a few weeks ago, the Black Lion uh, power strip that has uh, noise filters in it. Oh, yeah. So I got one of those. And so I, I plugged it in on Sunday, um, playing at my church. Um, oh, and uh it's my first mm -hmm. time using the quad cortex and just the quad cortex so it's yeah. like one the lightest load in i've ever had which was wonderful just carrying a backpack in my guitar bag with me um but uh i had a power i had an equipment failure mid-service Ooh, the dreaded like the the that the argument right the the argument from amp players and stuff like that well that what happened? I, mean, I mean so the I, argument I, of like you know oh uh, it's gonna reboot on you in mid-service yeah but i mean like if, if you lose power to anything it stops working but yes it yeah. took a it takes longer to, for th some things to reboot i guess yeah because if you turn off a hot tube amp and fire it right back up it's already hot, so it should be working. There's no actual like real right. protection circuit in that thing that keeps it from like that that the whole tube amp warm up that you're supposed to do. Um, there's there's nothing like programmed into it. It's just literally things warming up. Um, no, but yeah. So I lost power um, like in a musical interlude into a verse and chorus and like. Ugh. So like you, you, if you watch the live stream playback, um, you can see me just bent over trying to fix it. And then I stand up and I like pantomime playing guitar for a little while. So no one's like, but you can definitely tell my heart's not in it. And then you can yeah. tell when I get sound back because one, you can hear my guitar again, but two, um, <laughs> you can actually tell I'm trying again. Um, yeah. but it was fine. Uh, I, I, you know, it was a song where guitar did not carry much of that, the, the main song. So it wasn't until the bridge that I needed to make anything, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm rethinking power for this thing. That's definitely, um, I don't want that to ever happen again. And I'm scared about that happening again with the, the little power brick that comes with it. And yeah. I, I reached out in groups for help and got, sent me links to locking IEC connectors. And I went, guys, the quad cortex doesn't have an IEC connector. And why are you in the quad cortex group offering help if you don't know that? But um, anyway, I reached out to a friend of the show. Um, we'll see if he gets back to me and uh, we might try to do an interview with him if that does happen. Okay, that's cool. Um, so I have a funny story that did not happen to me, but my I so I'm in a text message. I'm in a group text message that's been around for I think we're going on like seven or eight years. Like same text message thread has been going ever like forever. And there's about, I think, six of us in this text group. And one of the guys says, so the live stream this week, apparently the MD's mic got fed to the live stream audio. And apparently on one part of a song, he said that we're going to raw dog it. <laughs> and, they took, <laughs> and, they, <laughs> and they took down the live stream. As they should. I mean, I... <laughs> That's like... I was going to say, I, by, the, by the time we were actually playing for the live stream, the MD is not giving much directions to us at all. Right. But it is like one of those classic ones of like the click went through the house or, you know, yeah. one of those kind of things. Yeah. Just hearing an MD on the live stream going, all right, we're going to raw dog this next part. <laughs> That's fantastic. I had to share that. <laughs> That's pretty good. This was my first time playing with an actual MD yeah yeah i mean like they, so they've had one mm. i i've had one in the past or like i was the one in the past uh you're just like give you're like was he like like really mding or was he being like i would be oh he he was actually calling out chords right like using national numbers yes. or is he giving 
Yeah, he's like one, four, five, you turds. No, I'm just kidding. But um, or yeah. like he he called out like one of them and he was like five hits, you know. Yeah, on five hits on the four and one, you know, like there there was those kind of things. Um, or or a guy that's different between the guy saying, "All right, we're gonna raw dog this next verse." Yeah, not yeah. that's that's a that's a very unfortunate word. Oh my god! Though we did get in an argument. When I say we, it was you know the singers were in an argument about who. Okay, controversies aside, mm-hmm. who's a better singer, Michael Jackson or Chris Brown? And there was a powerful, powerfully passionate argument for Chris Ooh. Brown. Ah. Uh... And I'm I was go, I was kicked out of the conversation MJ. when I said I don't really listen to Michael Jackson after uh, Thriller, but oh, f- all right, another funny story. Apparently, we're gonna we were talking about how this week was like slow news going to be, yeah, slow news week. Um, so funny story. I, I had an employee. We're working. It's about eleven o'clock at night on a Saturday night, and he looks at or no no no. He said it about seven, and we had to work five hours together after this was <laughs> said. He goes, Michael Jackson was not relevant after the Jackson 5. Well, that's just patently false. I lost my shit. Our lobby was closed, so no customers could hear me. We didn't have a car at the time or anything like that. And I literally, like, just start screaming. I go, I was like, I said, are you that fucking dense? I said, Thriller Mm -hmm. is the number one selling album of all time he's like yeah but this is he's like well no this one sold i said no 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 i said i'm gonna say this slower number one selling album of all time meaning no other album has sold as many copies ever this album has sold the most of all time and all night i just it would be like you just hear like, hey, did he say no mayonnaise? I said, I don't know, but I can tell you this. Thriller's the number one selling album of all time. I just all night. That's all I would yell. <laughs> like, Michael I Jackson still... n- was never not relevant. And that's what I tried to explain to him. I was like, I was, I was like, he constantly said, look at, look at the like excitement for his like tour that he was about to do before you know whenever he passed away like watch this is it okay yeah i was going to mention this is it okay practice for a concert that didn't happen was a blockbuster movie yes and made the careers out of some of the musicians involved in it orianthe was on there yeah that was her breakout right like yeah like like how <coughs> like how can but you yeah, sit there and... uh, Jackson 5 that was that was his peak now i will say yeah, yeah that's i was like i was like his you, sing- was like... That, that was part of the argument that these guys made was that michael jackson's singing was best when he was with the jackson 5 and as an um, adult that his vocal styles or whatever wasn't as good but it was more about the whole show together i don't know <laughs> hold on I think this is a little bit of the LeBron James, uh, Michael Jordan discussion of like, there, there's, there's an argument to be made that LeBron James might actually be physically a better basketball player than Michael Jordan. But the originator, Green Day and Fall Out Boy. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, <laughs> you're so proud of yourself. Sorry, you all, you all missed in the pre-episode, Diaz dropped that word, and I was like, Interesting. Because <laughs> uh, I was, I was like trying to think of the word of like saying how. So we were, we were talking about how uh, Fall Out Boy opening for Green Day. Scott said, you know, like, well, Fall Out Boy is like more relevant. And I was like, well, Green Day like was the god, you know, one of the founding first breakthrough pop punk bands. And I said, I, I was like, we're trying to find the word. I was like, the, you know, provenance, and it, it actually works. And I was proud. I, I am proud of myself. I know words. Thank you. I congratulated you in the pre-app. Don't make me do it publicly. Yeah. <laughs> no, good job, Diaz. I'm proud of myself. All right. What were we talking about? Michael Jackson. Um. Yeah, so, like, that's the thing with Michael Jackson. Uh, the, a big thing with Michael Jackson is, is, like, 
to claim you're better than it, it's a, it's one of the he, things where he it's was like, the originator of the modern pop star that and chris brown modeled through. himself after like the yeah. whole yeah he's a like, continuation it, of it it's like there would be the the mike uh justin timberlake is modeled yes. on michael jackson now he made it his oh, own yeah. and he did stuff different but yeah and he started Caucasian. um <laughs> Fair enough, but like, who was who was that? I mean, arguably, um, Elvis Presley was. Elvis could be made could be argued he was the first pop star. Um, he was. I would say he, yeah, like in the definition of being a an artist, that and a is, movie thing, and like all the commercialization, right? And the fact that like you know he was targeted towards young females, and that's a big thing with pop stars. Is that, I mean, look at Teen Bop tiger beat all those magazines that are directed to push pop stars right into teenage mostly girls boys as well faces um yeah i'd say elvis presley was probably one of the first people to be like that anyway but he also he stole all his stuff from black people though i said it i don't care it's true i'm not disagreeing not disagreeing all right are we done with what's new? It's been like, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, should we just wrap up this episode right now? All right, let's should just call it a day. Yeah. Let's just... <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. No, all right, all right. So let's let's talk about a couple of these things at least. All right, so last week, Diaz pretty much shit <laughs> on Bill Finnegan starting a YouTube channel. That was yep. on this one, right? Yeah. And by the way, yeah. the stream was uh, not that great. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you watch it? It did have... No, no, I'm not interested in that at all. Um, so did you watch it? Um, I did the thing where I open it and I just kind of click through it. Yeah. So from what I understand, the KTR uh, diodes are running low, right? So yeah, it's going to be discontinued. By the way, those are the same diodes that are in the full-size clon. Everything else is F- SMT, but it is the same. They were always the same diodes. That was okay. part of the magic of the KTR. Yeah. So th- maybe that also means um, the Archer so, icon is going to go out of production then too if he can't find any more diodes. Because what, what weren't, if, weren't those supposed to be the same? Yeah, but what if J Rocket bought all the diodes and is putting Bill out of business? Power play. Ooh. Actually, isn't that the same concern with the King of Tone that they're going to run out of certain parts for it? You know what? Honestly, I think that they got to come. Gotta, there's got to be a comparable part. There's got to be something. Well, comparable. so that that's the news is that the KTR is coming back into production despite um, those parts running out. Um, so he has retooled the KTR with a new layout and new components. Yeah. So the guy who said, don't blame me for the hype is now making announcements to cause hype. Because, you know, everyone's going to be like, I've got version 1.1, not 1.2 of the clone. So I think that's HR. definitely going to be what happens, which is all, all the more yeah. reasons. And, you know, to be honest, I can't hear the difference between them. And if he does legitimately start selling KTRs again at like 200 bucks, I might buy one and just see what they're like back to back. Then you can either sell well, that if, one. If I, if I could sell or... my original for a thousand bucks, maybe I might. I don't know. Um, yeah, kind of like we were talking about me with the King of Town. Yeah. No. Was that me and you? Maybe. I mean, I have I have a King of Town right now, and like, yeah. it, I'm tempted to sell it sometimes. Yeah. The money there. Like, it, any day now, my name's gonna pop up on the list. I thought I already did. No. No says it's up until august 25th or september 25th i'm the 28th or whatever month it is i can't i could have sworn you got the email already no i didn't Mm. i wish i did hold on let's see let's check it again welcome to the weekly diaz checks his king of tone list yeah it's on september 25th 2007 i'm on september 28th okay um last update was the 31st of august so I'll, I'll put it this way bill's bill did try to his posture was not look how magical the original one is it, it was yeah. look i've nailed it i've 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 copied it perfectly i can't hear a difference this is going to work for you 
Um, and he went about it in his kind of weird bill ways where he has like this custom made switcher thing that he made for it. And he's comparing it to the original Klon, uh, Centaur and saying, I can't hear a difference. Look, you can't hear a difference. And over YouTube, I couldn't hear a difference. So yeah, whatever. But he was also driving the game pretty hard on it, which I don't normally do. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we talk about this before that I like to use, um, the KTR to shape and boost something else whether it's push mm -hmm. more of the amp. So when I when I run my KTR, it really is more of the amp sound, you know, more than it is the uh, the KTR sound, air quotes. Right. Anyway, we're talking this to death. We'll see how we'll see yeah. if these actually stay in production first off. Oh because the KTR goes in and out of production all the time and the market crashes and all that hoopla. So we'll see. Like a rocket. All right, so Noatronic wireless system lets you control MIDI enabled pedals with your guitar tone knob. Um, I believe we've talked about this pedal before, but they just announced the Indiegogo campaign. Yeah. And the old one existed already. Like that already came to market. Right. So this is an updated one, it looks like. This is. I still think it attaches to your strap in a weird way. I don't know what that piece is over there. So that's for like, you know, when you get a leather strap, you have the smaller piece and the bigger piece, and one loops into right. the other. That's where you're supposed to loop that thing in. Okay. So if you scroll down, there's a picture of it on a strap. Uh, keep scrolling, 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 scrolling. What? Oh. Okay. It's wireless. That was the thing about this. Well, it's also, isn't it also a wireless unit on top of um, a wireless MIDI? MIDI? So it also yes. does wireless audio, and so it takes right all the pins out of your guitar to do it so like this would be freaking fantastic for like someone who wanted it i don't know how much is it going for it wonder how good the wireless is that's the question um it could be i mean it could be pretty good oh it's cool is it it's a pretty sleek uh it looks receiver nice. like it's a, it's a pretty small yeah. wireless all things considered um right. Uh, where's the go go? Wake me up for your Indiegogo. I can't find it. Live on Indiegogo. There. Now I'm clicking this link. We're going down. Um. Oh God! You just got Kesha stuck in my head. How? I just sang Wham. You said it, it's going down, and so then Timber just started going off in my head. It's going down, down in an earlier round. That's Fallout Boy, but thank you. Oh, it's well, got a tuner it's... built into it too. Well, frick doodles! This has to be around five six hundred dollars. Um, so the first bid no, round was three hundred sixty euros, which would be probably about four. four it's four hundred twenty three dollars yeah. USD. Oh yeah, it's right there. Um, yeah. The next round went. Oh my gosh, four hundred seventy dollars. That's still expensive for a wireless unit, though. But for what it does, more uh, the, you can still get it for four hundred twenty three dollars. Yeah, at, at the time, only 12 people have supported it so far. That's not a good... Not a good sign. And you won't get it for another year. Yeah, May 2022. Um, But this is cool. I, You know, this is actually... This was a really good idea, I think, on their parts of taking yeah. an interesting idea and making it more practical and feature-rich. Like, they actually really added some stuff to this. So, I wish you all the best of luck. With yeah. this, I will that, probably not be purchasing one of these, though. Probably. It's very, I mean, it's really great for the people who go MIDI crazy. But if if you're just using MIDI, I, I don't know. You don't use it in insane ways. You use it a yeah. lot for just presets, right? If, well, here's the thing. One, I would have to only play one guitar, which I'm not that kind of guy. Like, I'm a, I'm a guy who always, likes, I like to swap out my guitars a lot and just keep, keep it you interesting. Always, you can always get a switcher. And run two different types of guitars, or like run one with cable and run and have that wireless for certain things. Yeah, but th th if I got this, I'd want to put the Noatronic ex expression knob uh, in my I guitar wonder, too. Uh, I wonder if you could just buy another receiver and knob, or not receiver, another uh, pack and knob. That's I mean, you could. It, it's it's a potentiometer that ties into a TRS jack on your Strat. Like, it's not once you know how to install one of them you can install it on the rest of your guitars without 
buying that potentiometer from them but well i'm talking about for the wireless like where it clips well, on your yeah you could just buy one wireless pack and use it on all your guitars yes yeah but then i'd have to install a new knob and new jacks into every single guitar and also find a place to put a knob so like a strat is it makes sense because a lot of people don't like both tone knobs and so you just right. make one a master tone and then you have the other one available for your expression okay. um, and then you got to tie into all your effects and determine what you want the expression to do which probably would be a wet to dry like what if you just get a pedal that you put on your pedal board that you maybe you can rock with your foot possibly all right, now we're just getting like we're sounding like we're being snarky about this, but whatever. It is. It's like I'm really intrigued by this. I think it's really cool. And then I start thinking about doing it, and I'm like, oh, oh, no, I'm just going to get another expression pedal. You know, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, so let's talk about this next thing, so Scott can shit on it. So Fairfield <laughs> Circuitry launches the squiggly, the Tilly 900. A ferocious four knob fuzz, and yes, it is called a Tilly. It's called it, isn't that a Tilda? Tilly. Sure about that? Are you Google this shit? What's the squiggly line? It's, it's called, called a Tilda. Are you sure? Yeah, this is the part of the episode that everyone complains about. What will you hear me too? It's it's pronounced it's spelled T I L D E. Okay, whatever. Do you call it a Tilly? Yeah. Yeah. I thought Looks that's like pr- a- I thought it's pronounced Tilda. I don't know. I could be just pronouncing it wrong. I can't read phonetic English, so I don't know how that's actually pronounced. Why anyway. isn't it? I'm looking it up. This is a Diaz is learning grammar. It's making me mad. You, you started out at such a high with provenance, and look at where you're no. sinking now from your hubris. Uh, you, can you see my hubris? <laughs> All right, sorry. Let's, <laughs> let's keep moving. And we're moving. Anyway, right, so, so it's, the- it's a four and out fuzz. It's sideways. It feels ZFXy. Yeah, I like. You know what? I, I really I. There's something about this look that I actually love. I feel like fuzzes is the only thing you can get away with where it's a bare enclosure with like stamped, like crooked stamped letter. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) they're like, all right, we're just going to raw dog this enclosure. (laughs) (laughs) And now we're canceled. Um, So yeah, there's a bias control. Um, JFET transistors has two stages of fuzz um i didn't listen to a demo i'm assuming it sounds fuzzy yeah 260 dollars canadian so that should be 200 ish american yeah for fuzz uh, fuzz prices but fairfield's pretty boutique right they're up there pretty proud of their stuff i can't name another pedal off the top of my head Oh, what else did they do? Hold on. I have to look it up. I can't remember. I've seen like plenty of their stuff. Before. Oh, they raw. They do a raw enclosure for everything. Yeah, that's why I was saying I love their look. They're made in Quebec. In Quebec. I give you the Quebec pizza. So they pizza got a modulator. Pop, they've up. got a compressor. They've got a ring mod. They've got an overdrive. Mm-hmm. They have an always on overdrive, which literally does not have a foot switch. Which I think is kind of clever. Um, analog delay. Active In all fairness, loop. John Cusack's been doing that. He he has one of those. John Cusack had the entire mini pedal line that none of them had switches. It was for people who use loopers. Oh, like cool. The tap, like like a delay, all that stuff. He it was kind of like the size of uh, all of the uh, um, like tap tempo boxes and all that, like the red remote. Mm-hmm. Like you know, was, that small. I was thinking today, I was like, man, I should get, I should do one of the interviews with uh, John. I think that would. I want to interview. I, I want to talk I, to John. I would love to do like an hour long with him. I am just like. Tr- I'm, I'm trying to get the phrase higher than John Cusack's Cox. 
like to be the thing <laughs> dude i was i was higher than john cusack socks <laughs> like it's like the higher than senator socks but for gear nerds he, he posted that's the level of dad like, that you've that you've reached yeah i want to get higher than john cusack socks all, all right. right uh Oh, um, and other follow-up one? news, uh, IK Multimedia has actually allowed a demo mode of all their multi-effects units uh, in Amplitude 5 oh, for wow. 72 hours. So if you've been holding you, out on their pedals going like, yeah, I just want to see how they sound, go fire yeah. up Amplitude. I think I thought you could have done that in the first place, but okay. Uh, <laughs> they were available for purchase as like an add-on before. Yeah. So now they're giving you a trial license of them. So. I think that's actually a really good way to, frankly, get a lot of us to try some of these things. So yeah, go demos. Sure. It's cool. All right. And then what's next? G and L bass guitars. Uh, the new L2500 series. Okay. I didn't know G and L did basses. He didn't? No. Maybe because it wasn't on the stupid deal of the day. That's the only time I see GNL guitars or painting to them. <laughs> Have you seen the price tag on these? <laughs> Is it stupid? Uh eighteen ninety nine. <laughs> this week. <laughs> Just wait till next Thursday. It it really is a shame how much the stupid deal of the day with those tribute models has just ruined that whole brand. my perception of value with GNL. <laughs> just in general yeah like the only person like everyone's like oh no but they got like look the guy who did like a rhinestone cowboy he plays one i'm just like okay well uh what's his name from uh allison chains gary cantrell has the signature rampage i know I yeah want it. he played one for ages uh-huh. but he's on gibson's now so uh, he still plays the rampage though i bet that that was like his first main guitar the one with the uh the sailor kind of like the sailor jerry lady like that americana thing yeah now, now like who was the guy who did rhinestone cowboy what was it glenn campbell that was it i don't want to sound like anyways yeah go gnl for this week and then next week it'll be like 700 dollars, 750 there we go all right, so Faith Guitars revamped its high gloss acoustic series with a three piece rosewood equipped FVHG3. You know what? Who comes up with the freaking models for acoustics? Can you guys just do something easy to remember? Yeah. Sick of it. So it's cool to see uh, three piece backs in another. Because um, I know Yamaha did those. Mm-hmm. At- as they Tech- did their version of a of a D thirty five, Tecamini's got them. T- oh, Tecamine, nice. Tecamini. I don't. I yeah, I just said that to be annoying. Um, okay. <laughs> I mean, Faith guitars are a more affordable line, or historically have been a more affordable line. And even though it looks like, uh, um, these are definitely pushing the more premium line of it. I don't. I just don't. I haven't really seen Faith guitars really penetrate the U.S. market as much as the U.K. market. Faith guitars has not penetrated me at all because I've never heard of them. You've never heard of them? No. Or am I thinking of Luna? I think you're thinking of Luna. The headstock kind of has that Luna thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, as far as, um, by the way, Diaz, when you're sparking your lighter, you should move it further away from the microphone. Um, I was actually lighting a candle, by the way. <laughs> uh-huh. You burned some incense there? I really there. was. <laughs> there, it's, it's apple cinnamon. I like the smell. It makes me feel like Mark got a clean apartment with apple cinnamon. It's, it really covers false, up yeah. the musky smell that existed before that. Um Oh, are you silent shaming me now that I made a marijuana joke about you? Am I what? Never mind. Silent shaming you? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, you just beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Speaking anyway, these these, it. <laughs> these will come in at just under seventeen hundred bucks. Is what it looks like. So neat. Well, you, 
You know what's going to come in a lot lower than that? Something from Harley Benton. This weekend, Harley Benton. All right, so they got thirty nine dollar light cases. Like I've like, who? How? You know what? They have to be using child labor. It's the only I mean, thing that it's makes coming sense. from. Chi- this is all Chinese made stuff coming out of some switch off. Like they they had to have like wrote and been like, we want the youngest kids because we want to pay the less, like the least. Like, yeah. No, because this is insane. Okay, it, personally, it, like, personally, I think. Music instrument cases are an area where price inflation gets kind of out of control. Because, because. I, I I don't think there's actually that much material cost or construction cost difference between like the $100 cases and the $500 cases, for example. Mm-hmm. There's just a lot of, well, this is better, so therefore we're going to charge more. And I think there's a lot more margin on the higher end ones. That's my personal yeah. opinion. Now, Probably. $39 is a very impressive cheap case the look of it like Mm -hmm. it looks like it's going to be and like it's not a it's not a hard case it's a light case but it looks like it would do a fantastic job like i like i want one yeah these look nice it's got space it i mean it uh, has room for activities uh it's got Lots of big, old, big old molded side cases or side pockets there for you um a nice long extended neck support and it looks like a soft shelled hard case yes it even has a hinge and everything in it so looks good i mean the problem is you again it's toman which means yeah, yeah it's 34 dollars. it's going to cost you 60 dollars to ship it to yourself here in the, in the states so Oh, we should have get sent forty bucks with Ryan. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, keep bringing this back. I'm just happy that he was able to come back to America. Oh yeah, I, I was, wait, I was wait, waiting for some COVID stuff to happen, and we lose Ryan to the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't mean for it to sound. I didn't mean for it to sound like World War II. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> oh man. Steve Aww. has to take over Ryan's family, like because that's he's a co-host. Like it's in the contract. Oh like, man, that whole family's to gonna have to move to Utah then. Wait, does Steve move into Utah? Well, I mean, if oh, you, if I get have, it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> on the net, I am touching the net. It's, it's actually legal. Yeah, yeah. I think it's legal in Utah again, or it's like no, decriminalized no in Utah. Yeah, Pro- probably decriminalized. I don't think it's illegal. My girlfriend was looking up something about that. That was like, because apparently. Um, Utah wouldn't make a law against it for a long time until, yeah. and that was preventing them from becoming a state. Eh, that's that's really dumb. I'm sorry. I I don't I I don't think I'm I'm why I'm just do, not why why are you uh oh wait uh so now um polygamy is now an infraction which can draw a fine up up to seven hundred and fifty dollars. So it's like a pet fee in an apartment at this point to have an, have an so extra here, wife. Here's, here's my... Okay. Uh, are we going to do this this episode? I don't have an issue with polygamy. I have an issue with child brides and what has happened on some of these compounds. But like polygamy and practice in like a practical sense. Who... What is it? Our bill? Who cares? Who cares? I don't know if I really want to step in this one or not. I mean, but like, what is it? Why is it? It's practiced in the Bible. That I mean, yeah. And even then, it's still the sense of, like I said, if it's not like, I understand the issue with child brides, but the thing is, is being against polygamy was around before the whole like big child bride scandal things. So well, it was. Uh, I, I honestly, I think there's stuff in the. Okay, I'm I'm coming from the reformed Christian kid perspective here, right? Right. Um, I, if I recall correctly, there's stuff in Paul's letters about qualifications for an elder in the church. Um, okay. And being a husband of one wife is one of the requirements. Okay, but that's also that falls under. And that was where was that was probably a letter to. Was it in Corinthians? Maybe. 
uh, Corinthians, it was direct, but Corinthians or Romans are always the safe bets, aren't they? Because those are the long right. ones. Um, right. Well, so like, but my point is, is maybe that was a rule for their, for their church at that time. Like, I mean, I know that arguments used quite a lot for things in the Bible that we're not fond of, like eating shellfish and stuff like that. Um, but I don't actually, it was first Timothy. Oh, well, maybe maybe Timothy just needed to calm down and just relax. Therefore, in First Timothy three two. This is the first time we've read Bible verses on the podcast. That's um, impressive. And we're not sponsored by Westminster anymore, so that's even more impressive. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife. Hmm. There you go. Um, and then there's more. And this has been Polygamy Minute on the Effects Loop. Slow news week, guys. <laughs> really slow news week, and yeah, I haven't. All right. Um, <laughs> speaking uh, of terrible news that would not normally make the show, Adori Audio Slim Tech is an ultra slim combo amp that fits in a gig bag. Wait, hold on. Why is have you not clicked open. the link yet? It my my internet's being stupid. Yeah. So. Founded by Las Vegas-based gear nerds Chuck Adori and Matthew Slack. I've, I've already made fun of this before. Have you? Oh, yeah. It sounds like butthole. Um, it is 1.5 inches thick, 8 watts. That's what she said. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. How many watts? <laughs> I think a lot of guys just looked down and went, 1.5? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thick, thick. <laughs> okay. That's diameter, guys. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's if you take the circumference. <laughs> no. Take all the circumference. Diaz, divided all, by pi. <laughs> all of a sudden, Diaz knows fucking algebra. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I, so, it, uh, is this one of those areas you can do geometry? Is as long as it's in reference <laughs> to penises. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like Kevin with pies. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> can, the reference I was going to make. Yeah. Oh my gosh! As long as it's about dicks, Diaz can do the math on it. Like what? Oh gosh! Do you have a notebook just full of pictures? <laughs> pictures of dicks. Well, what was the one where the the guy? That's all he drew. Super he bad. Sat around. Yes, that was it. <laughs> just two pictures of dicks all right um speaking of dicks this thing's i'm sorry uh does it actually not sound that good i could imagine that no a it sounds like this it's, could it's, sound okay it sounds like, it sounds like a rancid butthole all right so sorry I, I i i i saw it on a facebook ad i don't know if we talked about it on the show but we <laughs> talked about it in the group maybe and those things are starting to blur together way too much. Um, yeah, no, it just sounds horrible. That's so, like so I shared the this ad is not for... a. Um, obviously, you're not bringing this to a good gig, idea, right? Like you're not doing that. Yeah. Is yeah. this for this is so you can sit? This sit is sitting on the uh, on the boardwalk. No, this is sitting on the boardwalk and looking like a total douche. Oh, that's what it was. I got in trouble on Facebook for this. I think. Um, <laughs> was this part of the reason why you got banned they, from I, Facebook for or you got put yeah, in time I, out? I, 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 no, this might have been a reason. Might have been part of the reason earlier on. I don't know. They could just be over my shit. Um, so I, I screenshot it. I did a screenshot and I put it in the group chat. That's what happened. Um, so this is an amp gig bag that no one needs. And so I put on, they had an ad and I put on there. I said, that way uh, women can know you're a douchebag from an either even farther distance. Because this, uh, the, the, I thought that's advertisement what was for. a guy. The guy was like on the boardwalk like on a, like a brick wall like leaning and playing guitar just looking like a total d-bag like if you're gonna like be playing guitar do you like like have the mouth open guitar player thing going on like not knowing what's going on or staring down at your hands no guitar player is looking off in the distance seductively wearing glasses like on the boardwalk only a douchebag is. I think that's what and only every guitar player thinks they look like when they're playing guitar. And so, then, like, you actually, like, watch, watch yourself video on and video like, and you're like, oh, I never looked up for my feet. You're like, I'm pretty sure the drool just fell out of my mouth. Like, what is yeah. going on? How do you know whenever a, a drummer's high riser is level? 
drool comes out of both sides of their mouth. All right. So are we going to talk about NAM 2022 being rescheduled? No, I think it makes sense. It was a good move. I hate that they did it in Anaheim in like June. It just um, like it. I think it, okay. I full disclosure. I didn't finish listening to you and Philip talking about it on the 40 watt podcast. Cause I don't know. I had things to do. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. No, I was watching. Dang. Oh, you, the reason was I was watching on YouTube and oh. I like closed it and just, you know how like when you half watch something on YouTube, you don't, it's not really there for you to finish. Like it is with a podcast. Right. Right. So I haven't finished. You weren't going to, you weren't going to search through and find out where you were at. You didn't, it was like, ah. yeah, You're like I lost that. I don't know. I think, I think Nam. I don't like, I don't like the time and the place. I wish that. I mean, cause you're primarily, you, you, only, I've never want, been... you only go to summer Nam. And so and Nashville right. is easy for you to get to. So naturally you're right. a person who wants summer Nam in Nashville to be as big as possible. Right. Well, I don't care if it's big or not. I just want it there. So my friends will be in town, mm-hmm. but, but like, I mean, I also think like, I think it was a bad decision on their part, just the time and location. Cause there's already cause people, cause school's going to be out and it's like Disney season and they said it's just going to be all, everything's going to be inflated in prices the airbnbs and oh, everything like the, that the whole hotel aspect of it during tourism season yeah that makes sense right and and there's a lot of people who are just and not even that it's like it's already busy and crazy enough but just you know inflate the amount of people that are going to be out and about so because there won't be people at there won't be kids at school there will be people on vacation there yeah. you know it's not january where people like aren't really doing i mean people are in school and do all this stuff so there's a lot of people who are like no definitely not i'm interested to see what happens i feel like i don't know I, i'm really interested to see what happens attendance wise mm-hmm. but i mean like honestly the only reason why i don't like the plan is like you said because i wanted to be in nashville i like summer nam because um also it's i like i like summer nam being smaller like because it helps with like uh i don't like large crowds for long periods of time it just it's it exhausts me i'm an introvert and it i can handle summer nam i don't know if i could handle winter nam that well or so so one of the perks of winter nam or anaheim nam is that it's in multiple buildings right so there are natural dividers throughout it um so from the professional's perspective um right and a, that's a few a, a few things to add um nam is way more than just guitar pedals like guitar pedals is like oh, yeah. three rows of a massive convention um mm-hmm. and so you have every musical instrument coming out for vendors you also have the pro audio world you have the recording world you have they actually have an arena there where they ha- have all different speakers hung to do a like side by side, but do do shootouts between the L acoustics versus the JBL versus the DNB, you know, professional loudspeaker stuff. Um, which someone will get snarky that probably that I meant even mentioned JBL in that sentence, but um, people need to recognize a brand. Uh, recognize. Yeah. So there's that side of it. And then the other part is just simply. <sighs> while the borders are closed to foreign nationals or just simply people coming in for conferences and stuff like that, these conferences are going to suffer because NAM is an international conference. Mm-hmm. You have an entire basement full of Chinese parts distributors and brands that or at least historically that's kind of been what the basement has been without that. That's a significant portion. Not there. You have the European brands, you have all these, it's it's an international thing, and without borders open, that's not going to happen. And so that's where I go. All right, scheduling it later when the borders might actually be open again. Maybe we don't know how bad of a pandemic if, year or restrictions and things like that. We don't know how quickly things are going to open fully back up again. But that's going to be a major factor in why they delayed it. What if we do a gear like a guitar nam on it in, in, in international waters? No rules. I, what do you think? I don't. 
I don't like where that's going based on the legacy of Nam of like the <laughs> 80s and 90s and how exploitative it was. Oh. Uh, the, right. the stories of like this brand just had a hot tub as their, you know, yeah thing. Um, the other thing to just factor in there too is I forget when Infocom is, but that's another big convention. Well, one thing um, we did realize is GearFest. GearFest is right around the same time as the new Nam time. Well, and some people argued that GearFest Gear... was better than um, Summer Nam. Well, I'm thinking about going to GearFest this year. I wonder. I also wonder if that will continue w- un- with uh, Sweetwater's new ownership. Have we I talked mean... about that on the show yet? Yeah. Okay. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, people. Uh, so there's Infocom to think about. And the other fun one is, uh, I'm really curious what happens with CES because Gibson used to skip winter NAM to do CES. If you remember, cause they were around the same time frame. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious if CES is going to still happen this winter in, uh, they were always Las hmm. Vegas if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I think some I, what I would love in the future is if Summer Nam actually moved around the country. I think that would be fun, but Summer Nam's not really about us. It's about the brands and the vendors. And Nashville is a is a hub of music vendors or of the music industry. So that's why well, Nashville and makes it's, sense. The placement of it on the you know in the contiguous United States isn't horrible. It's a it's a decent spot. It's not in the center, but it's not like too far off. Is it? <laughs> uh, I think it's pretty close to the um, population center of the United States. Okay. But yeah. Eh. So anyway, I, talk- I, I don't think this is going to be a permanent thing. I think this is something just for 2022. I think they'll go back to the winter summer model. Because they, I think they'll want the post Christmas new products release cycle. All right, so so I just I just, I just googled center of the United States. There Geographic the, or the population center. All right, I'm, I, that's all I t- I I googled center of the United States. I've got the geographic center of the United States. Histor- historical landmark is in Lebanon, Kansas. The next thing. Geographic center of the nation monument is in Bell Forest, South Dakota. And then next is United States Postal Service closes soon, 6 p.m. <laughs> uh, Weird. That was funny. But why are there two different? What is? There's no way a geographical or population centers in Dakota anything. Yeah, Nothing's that far this... north. It's, they claim it. They named it and claimed it. Yeah, like there's a... What the heck? What are you doing, South Dakota? <laughs> you can't just... What? <laughs> Let's leave some reviews. <laughs> some reviews of South Dakota? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually quite surprised how interesting the stop was. The monument is in a lovely green space, but the star was the... The star was the attached... Mo- on him or the attached museum and visitor center totally worth a stop highly recommended for fans of south dakota history and especially seth bullock okay how many fans why are there fans of south dakota history oh my gosh as a geographer coming across the center of the nation is an awesome experience it's not the center of the nation what is their definition of the nation I don't know. We we need to wrap this up. I want to I want to see the negative reviews. Come on. <laughs> okay. Last <laughs> thing on the list here, Earthbound Audio. Um, I don't know if anyone saw any of this. It's been doing news rounds. They got hit hard by the recent um, tropical storm or hurricane, whatever it was at the time it was hitting them. Um, but uh, their operations are effectively on indefinite hold. Hold. Their home got destroyed to an unlivable mm. spot. Um, there is a GoFundMe page up right now. We'll have a link in our um, uh, show notes. Um, 
as always, we, you know, we try to support good people in the industry and yes. I, I don't personally um, have much of a relationship with this owner, but no. I, it's, it just sucks to see people in these situations where they, they need help. And so yeah. uh, if you want to help them, go check out their GoFundMe. Um, I know it's well underway and hopefully it can help them get back on their feet and also help uh, the owner, Mark, start getting his business going again and making pedals again. So, yeah, well, you guys go check out the, the show notes um, and you can find that link and we really appreciate you guys thanks for listening to our fun episode of he just said it was a final episode fun episode okay. oh, what do you think you think i was pulling a fucking axel rose and like quitting the band and like only like well you just got you your stage? you just got your good uh big ear pedal so maybe you're out maybe you yeah. finally got your last payday and you're like i'm done yeah yeah that, that's all i actually wanted the, the entire time was this pedal all right um so leave me hanging uh, for another six months in sponsorships that i still have to oh develop content for for grant to be happy <laughs> thanks for the Abby. bye um yeah <laughs> anywho thanks for listening everybody uh go to go to the effects loop.com you can find links to all of our stuff our facebook group our patreon our gmail all that fun stuff uh for the effects loop i'm diaz i'm scott and we'll see you next week and while we're leaving I'm going to read the lowest ratings of the Geographical Center of the United States in South Dakota. If I went to a place proclaiming it was Mount Rushmore, only to find that Mount Rushmore was actually 20 miles north of the plaque that made this proclamation, I would feel betrayed. Don't waste your time. Kind of less impressive when you're not seeing it as a point on a map. Not the center. True center is 23 miles away. This really isn't the Geographical Center. There's no monument here. When we asked where the monument was, the lady said it was 20 miles away on private property. That was, yeah. These are recent. These people feel betrayed. Aside from the information center being closed, not surprised. We were disappointed to find out that the actual center of the USA, which we found out it includes Hawaii and Alaska, not the continental USA, it actually approximately 20 miles north. Oh, it includes the fake states, states, I see. Yeah, see, that's the confusion. (laughs) I'm talking, that's of the nation, so the United States doesn't include them. This is the nation. Wait, so it's the literal center? Uh, So if you go between Maine, right? Maine's the east most point in the United States, right? To Hawaii? Yeah. South Dakota winds up being the middle of that straight line? I don't, I think it's saying like the middle if like... In, like the diameter because like hawaii is a five hour flight from california like it's a longer <laughs> drive it i'll tell you that much <laughs> <laughs> you're so proud of yourself on that one <laughs> that was fucking great i swear if you cut off the recording before this i would be so good. Uh. all right bye guys bye <laughs> Dictionary, why is negativity always drawn out? Pictionary, visualize love, energize lives together, together. We undefeated, a plan to make well, there's no gloves needed. When we weed into the mindset of achieving and believing in a community that remains happy, that the actor, the world should be one. Hate annihilated, every heart is one. Love again, so don't bother me.